really when you step into uncertainty and uncomfortableness and really pushing the envelope on what's next for you, that's where you're going to gain the most confidence. That's when you're going to get the most intuitive hits and downloads because you're in aligned with what your purpose is for your life, the calling that's on your life. It's when we stay stuck and we're not taking action that we're not going to get that intuitive download. Welcome to the Permission Slip Podcast, where I, empowerment coach, mindset expert, and holistic nutritionist, Carmen Oling, share with you the tools, conversations, and resources you need to write your own permission slip, take massive action, and become obsessed with your own life. Let's get started. This isn't just about information. I didn't want you to just join this life coaching summer school just to get information. It's about implementation and then integration because those are the stages to personal growth, right? It's like we're over here just living life and then we realize, oh, there's something coming up for us. Like maybe we want something more in our life or we're not feeling completely fulfilled in our life. And so then we become personally aware, right? So we introduce this idea of personal awareness where we're gathering information, but then we need to actually take the information and we need to implement it. And I always say like implement things three times. So you want to implement it just to try it out and get the courage to be able to do it, to build your confidence. You want to implement it and to see how it might work for you. And then the last and final step is to implement it in a way that you can fully integrate it into your life. And those are really the stages of personal growth. But most people, they either get stuck in just being so not self-aware or they're in self-awareness and they have this information and level of self-awareness, which you all are getting just the small glimmer of little tools that you can use, which I took straight from Flow Academy, um, that you can use to integrate and implement in your life. And those are the steps I really encourage you to take. So if you feel like you're getting stuck or you have a question on anything, please email them to me because I do not want anyone stuck in just the information awareness stage. I don't want you to be there. I want you to try it out. So I want you to implement it how I told you. And then I want you to integrate it your way that works for you and your life. So let's just dive into the presentation today. Let me pull it up here. And so again, today we're talking all about busting through blocks and then tapping into our own intuition. So let me share this presentation with you. And there we go. We'll just hop right in. So our intention today is really learning to open up to new possibilities, ideas, and solutions by learning to trust yourself in your inner guidance system. Now, my inner guidance system is the voice of God. That could be just your own personal intuition. That could be spirit. That could be universe. That could be an angel. Whatever you believe in, just know that having a spiritual relationship of your own understanding, and it doesn't have to be like the religious dogma that many of us grew up with, like good or bad, heaven or hell, right or wrong. Like it's creating this intimate relationship with something that's greater than you that you know that you don't, that you can rely on anytime. Um, A Course in Miracles um, says that anytime, like you have every right to be fearful or anxious if you are just relying on your own strength. And what that means is that we have that, that strength, that power, that love that's within us and around us. That's just like guiding us and supporting us, opening invisible doors so we can have and be whatever we want in life. But we just need to tap into it. And we do that by letting go of control and learning to open up to new possibilities, ideas, and solutions by trusting yourself and your inner guidance system. Okay. So back to this self-assessment again, I know a lot of these weeks we've been kind of talking about similar ideas, but that's really how you're going to be able to take it from self-awareness to integration into your life, implementing it and then integrating it. So what do you want? What do you dream? What do you desire? Make a decision on that because our thoughts, intentions, and actions create our reality. So in thinking about what you want, And I'd love for you to email me and let me know what it is that you want. But what do you want? What is that dream? What is that vision? What's on your heart? Even if it sounds risky or crazy, because sometimes we're given those dreams and we don't take action on them because we're worried about what other people will think. 
But if it's if God's given to you, given it to you, he's not going to give you more than you can't handle. It's for you. It's for a reason. And if you think about this, it's not really that you're doing it for you. You're doing it for the vision, which is normally to serve and show up and help others. So after you've figured out, okay, what is the dream? I want you to think about, do your thoughts, intentions, and actions align with your dream, with your desire, with your vision? And if you're anything like me, some of the dreams and desires that I had on my heart, I didn't take action on them because I was too busy in my everyday life. And so my answer to this question would be, no, my intentions, thoughts, and actions are not aligned with that because I'm allowing my external environment to really control me. And really that goes back to like fear, like me not feeling like I was good enough in order to step into this big vision that I had. So take a little time to do some self-reflection on this. And then let's just talk about like how to bust through your own blocks, like how to bust through that fear, how to bust through that imposter syndrome, how to bust through that need to control all the time, how to bust through the need to have certainty, not being able to step into uncertainty, because really when you step into uncertainty and uncomfortableness and really pushing the envelope on what's next for you, that's where you're going to gain the most confidence. That's when you're going to get the most intuitive hits and downloads because you're in aligned with what your purpose is for your life, the calling that's on your life. It's when we stay stuck and we're not taking action that we're not going to get that intuitive download. So let's talk through these five things that you can do to bust through the blocks. First, assume the energy of what it is like to have your deepest dream or vision come to life. The absolute best way to do this is just to do it through meditation or journaling or a combination of the two. And so what that would look like is, let's say you just sat down with your pen and your journal, or maybe you write in pencil. I don't know. Sometimes I write in pencil in my dream journal. Um, and you wrote out, thank you so much for, and you write out what your vision is like it's already happened. Thank you so much for providing me with the energy, energy and inspiration to write my best-selling book, Unraveling the Rush. This book has changed and transformed the lives of hundreds of thousands of people and continues to do so today through the book sales and the stages that I speak on on this topic. I am forever grateful. So I wrote that in my journal like it had already happened. None of that has happened. But you see, when I write it down in my journal and declare it done and give it thanks, give thanks for that. Then what I do is I put my pen down and I take some deep breaths and I just imagine myself on the stage speaking or at the bookstore doing the book signing. I imagine people reading the book and being impacted by it and then gifting the book to other people. And it evokes this, this energy and this feeling inside of my body of excitement, of enthusiasm, of wanting to take more action and in, impact the lives of so many more people and allowing this book to not only create a small ripple, but a huge wave and having people really join me in the pursuit of being the one to show the world how great life truly is and together making a massive impact in the world. So if you're assuming the energy of what it is, to have your deepest dream and desire come to fruition and live in that. And if you assume that energy every day, how do you think that would change things for you? I'll tell you what, it's a way to manifest and make your dreams happen even faster than you could possibly imagine. So assume the energy every day of what it is to actually have that come true. The second thing is make sure you're celebrating what you do have. We often miss out on this. Celebrate the things that you have today and you'll get more. Being in a state of gratitude is going to be in a state of, yes, please give me more. If you've been in my community for a while, you know that we don't ever say, oh my gosh, like when something happens unexpected, often you hear people say, oh my gosh, I can't believe that happened. But no, we want to celebrate what we have and we want more. So we always like to say, of course that happened. Thank you. More, please. Of course that happened. Thank you. More, please. 
right? Celebrate what you do have today. Even I know in times where maybe finances were hard for us, I would sit and I would celebrate having the money to be able to pay the bills that I am paying. I would sit and celebrate the clients and my group programs and my one-on-one -on -one coaching that I did have. Maybe I had a vision for having, you know, 50 people in a group program and I had 10. And so I'm celebrating the 10 and giving my absolute best and so much excellence with the 10. Do you see where I'm going with this? Celebrate what you do have and you'll be in energetic alignment to get more. You'll be in energetic alignment to get the downloads that you're looking for, to get the intuition hits, to trust your inner knowing because you're in that energy. Now, the next thing is to be open to creative possibilities. So if you're anything like me, I used to be a plan it, prepare it, control it, repeat type person, right? There was no room for like God to do his work because I always wanted to know what was going to happen, who was going to be there, how it was going to happen. I wanted to control all the outcomes. And then when I didn't get the outcome that I wanted, I would be quote unquote disappointed with myself. And then I would do the worst thing, which is I would make the outcome that I received, which I didn't think was good enough, mean something about myself or my self-worth. And if we can do everything that we can to detach from that, detach from the outcome and be able to be open. And this is really what changed the game for me. It was being able to sit down to forecast and to plan and to have the action steps, but also be open to new possibilities or creative solutions. When a challenge comes, great. Instead of trying to control it and make it exactly like how the plan was, it was like, I'm open to creative possibilities and solutions to see things a different way. When something unexpected happened comes, comes, I don't say like, oh, I say, what am I learning from this? What is available here to me right now? And what this has done for me is this has created so much more opportunity and possibility in my life and in my work. It creates peace and freedom inside because, you know, when you, something doesn't go as expected and you just feel so down, you feel so disappointed, feel upset with yourself, you feel uncertain. Like we want to get back to that energetic energy of what it is that we truly desire. And it's not going to be aligned if we are in that controlling aspect. So I'm not saying that you don't want to plan. You want to plan and you want to forecast and you want to dream, but you also want to be open to the magic of creative possibilities because it's always, of course, the miracle says it's always going to be this or something better. And so when life presents you with a challenge, when life presents you with something unexpected, because we know it's always going to happen because God's always preparing us for our next level. And sometimes we have to have those challenges on this level to be prepared for what's going to happen on the next level. And if we can say like, OK, what's available to for me now, like I'm open to creative possibilities, please, God, universe, show me. And opening ourselves up to that, it is so beautiful. The most amazing things have happened because of that uh, for me and for many of my clients. The next thing is to live in full belief. So often we have a dream and a desire for something, but we have an underlying belief or story that we continue to tell ourselves that blocks us from what we want coming to fruition. So maybe we want to start a coaching business. Maybe we want to um, start a new hobby. Maybe we want to start new friendships or new relationships. You know, we talked about relationships last week. But underneath, we have an underlying belief of we're not good enough or whatever the story might be. And so what I want you to think about is doing a little inventory on your belief. So let's say you're following these steps every single day, just like you're, you're trying them out. You're not, you're actually integrating them into your life. Each morning you're declaring done in your journal what you want. You're feeling the feelings in your body and you are open to creative possibilities and you're being grateful for what you have today. And then a thought comes in that tells you that you're not good enough. Instead of what we normally do is we push that down and then we get busy doing something else, right? We need to stay busy all the time because it's harder to like tackle those beliefs that we have. If we sat in that story, if we used what I like to call just the power of the pause for a moment, 
When you start feeling that feeling, you can ask yourself, what are the stories that I'm telling myself right now? And then you can ask yourself, what is the belief underneath that story? Because beliefs are the ultimate catalyst for change. You can hold them, you can challenge them, or you could change them. And the more and more that you can uncover the stories that you're telling yourselves and the beliefs that are underneath that, the more that you can actually take action on your life in the way that you want it to go. So you want to be living in full belief. And you can do that each and every day by continually challenging your stories. Now, there's a lot more to that. I, I often share like how to actually do that and dig into our beliefs and stories a little bit more because it's not our plan. It's not our dream. It's not our desires. It's not our big vision that guide our actions every day. It's actually our underlying beliefs. And that could be the one reason that you're not being able to bust through blocks is those beliefs in your relationships, in your health, in your career, in your finances, in your personal growth, in your spiritual life, whatever it is, it's probably an underlying belief. And then the last thing is be clear on what you want and surrender, release your attachment to the outcome. Now, I chatted on this a little bit when we were just talking about being open to creative possibilities, but this is it. We all have too much of a stronghold. Like we are white knuckling on the outcomes. And then when we don't get the outcome we desire, we're making it mean something. We don't get the thank you that we want when we did a big thing for our family. We don't get the raise that we want at work. We don't get the clients that we want or the sale that we want. We Maybe we don't keep our commitment to ourselves with our weight loss journey, whatever it is. When we don't get the outcome that we desire, we make it mean something. And so here's what I want you to know about that is outcomes are information. Only information, and they mean nothing about our own self-worth. Our self-worth is never up for grabs. We are always worthy. We are always anointed. And so if we can release our attachment to the outcome, and while it may not look in that time as like a quote-unquote favorable outcome or what we wanted, there's always something to learn. There's always something new that we can shift to if we're open to those creative possibilities. And you can stay with that centered sense of peace and freedom if you go through life this way. Because what will start happening is you'll start experiencing more and more miracles each and every day. And a miracle, as A A Course in Miracles says, is just simply a shift in our perception. Like think back to that one of those times when you're like, oh, I never thought of it that way. And something in your life really shifted because you took action on that new perception, that new thought that you had. Um, Because miracles are natural. And when they do not occur, something has gone wrong. And we should be experiencing those every day. So those are the five ways to bust through blocks and to start tapping into your own intuition. Now let's talk a little bit more about intuition So intuition is really our inner knowing, our inner guidance system, and you can only hear it if you slow down. You can not hear it by going for a walk and listening to a podcast or music or asking other people for their opinion or their advice. You can only hear it in stillness and silence with yourself. And it's in the silence where you hear the most and it is the loudest. And I'm not saying that you have to sit crisscross in a meditation for hours upon hours every single day. It could be a few moments in time. And how do you know if it's like just random crazy? I get this question a lot. Like, how do you know if it's random crazy thoughts or if it's like your intuition, if it's spirit, if it's God, like actually kind of sharing something with you. And what I like to share with you on that is like our own crazy ego self will try to tell us like all these fear-based thoughts, right? Or try to control things. And that's really going to be like fast and loud and overpowering. But our intuition is actually going to be something that's quick and just soft And it just comes in at a moment's notice. And it could be the thing like, really? Wow, interesting. Like it may not even make any sense. And so what I encourage you to do is start keeping like a small like travel size journal with you or a note on your phone. And each time throughout the day, maybe you do this a few times throughout the day just to recenter yourself and just ask for guidance, you know? So you could just close your eyes and just take some deep breaths. Just say, 
I trust my inner knowing and my inner guidance system. Show me what you've got. What would you like me to know in this moment? And then you just take a few minutes and you just start taking deep breaths and doing like a body scan, just body scanning through your toes and your legs, up your torso, you know, all the way to the crown of your head. And then just taking a few deep breaths there. Now, there's different types of intuition. And the four main types are going to be clairvoyance. So maybe when you close your eyes and you're doing the body scan, you might see like colors or visions. Clairaudience means clear hearing. And it doesn't it doesn't necessarily mean like words or music or sounds. It may be like a buzzing in your ears or something like that that you notice first off, but it's hearing something different once you like kind of tap into that more calm, relaxed, silenced state. Claircognizance is a, a clear knowing. You just know things. Um, and oftentimes it could be about someone or something. And then a clear feeling is you just feel things. So if you ever walked into a room and you're like, whoa, the energy in this room is like, it feels like this or it feels like that, right? Um, so a clear knowing and a clear feeling are the last two. And so listening to your own intuition is going to be one of the ways that you start learning to trust yourself. Because the information that we're really seeking is on the inside. And I know that I used to hear that all the time. And if I was just first, like, maybe even like 10 years ago, if someone was talking to me about this, I would be like, BS. I just want to know, like, the facts and the figures and the information and the research. And I'm just going to read books and read podcasts. And yeah, there's information out there that we can get. And it is valuable. I am all about learning. But when it comes down to really visioning for your life, really making decisions for yourself, really answering some of those hard questions and finding your direction, it really comes down to listening to your inner guidance system. And so that is definitely part of busting through blocks. And it only happens in stillness and silence. So try out the journaling method that I was teaching you where you're getting into that energy because things will come through too. As you start writing, you'll find this is another way that you can really listen to your intuition. It's called stream of consciousness writing or journaling. And so basically you're writing something down and then you just let the pen flow and you just kind of see what comes through. And I love to do this on dreams and visions. Um, you just let the pen flow and you don't correct yourself or Anything like that, you don't worry about it. You're the only one that's going to read it. And so just write, 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 write whatever comes through without questioning anything. And then once you feel complete, go back and read it. And then just sit in a meditation, just stillness with your breath, maybe for a couple of minutes. And then see if anything else comes through after that. And then write again. It's really, really powerful. And at first, maybe nothing comes through. But just like anything else, it's like a muscle that you have to practice. And so practicing it is how you are going to get there. So those are the steps to bust through blocks and start tapping in to your intuition. And so I highly, highly encourage you to try these things out and continue the other things that we have learned throughout our time together this summer in Life Coaching Summer School. And if you're wondering about Flow Academy, I promised you I was going to share a little bit more about Flow Academy and what it's like to go through the Holistic Life Coaching Program. And so I want to do that now. So let me just tell you a little bit about what a life coach does, because there's so many things that people think about a life coach. But a life coach goes through helping you dream big, like expanding your mindset. So one of the things that we talked about being open to creative possibilities. And once you dream big, your life coach can help hold you accountable by co-creating a higher standard and then holding you to it. Dreaming big, creating a higher standard to your life and helping you um, be accountable to holding that higher standard. And then also finding meaning in the lessons in the challenging times of life. I know for me, it's just been so valuable to always be in a coach coaching uh, relationship of some sort, because I just, I can't get stuck anymore. It's like, I want to keep going and I want to keep making an, the impact that I am meant to make. 
A life coach also helps keep your ego in check. And so your ego is that fear, that doubt, those negative thought loops that come up, the belief-based stories that you tell yourself that we were talking about can help you uncover those and unpack those and move through those and challenge or change some old beliefs that you may not want anymore. Then also a life coach helps you stay committed by being a support system um, because it can get hard sometimes. Or maybe if you feel like you're you're not getting enough progress fast enough. So many of us feel that way because, you know, life always tells us, society tells us everything has to be fast, fun and easy. And if it's not, then like it's not for us, which is not true. And then lastly, a life coach has is an expert with proven strategies and shortcuts from their own successes and their client successes that they can sh- then share with you. And that is the number one reason why I actually created Flow Academy because I put together all of my proven coaching methodologies over a decade from my own life and my client's life. And I put it into Flow Academy and you get to learn all of those things from a holistic standpoint, because really right now is the best time to become a coach. In fact, the future is going to be even better um, on coaching because the life coaching field is a $2 billion industry that grows over almost 6% a year, according to Forbes. And many coaches make well over six figures each year, which is amazing for doing work that you're so passionate about that is impacting the world in such a massive, massive way. And I mentioned Flow Academy is um, the proven strategies and resources that I use and that I have uh, cul- culminated over the last decade. And this is really it. So on the screen, I'm sharing the Flow Life flow chart that we go through and we learn all the coaching tools and techniques for ourselves first. So that's how you learn in Flow Academy is each of the practices you practice and you do yourself so that you can embody it and that you can teach it to other people. After we practice it ourselves and we turn around and do practice coaching with each other and learn how to implement that into our businesses. And then if you choose to become a certified coach, then you do practice live coaching with real clients as well, which is so awesome and something with my coaching training that I got over a decade ago, it didn't come with that. And so I put together everything that I would have wanted in a coaching program into Flow Academy for all of you. But there is an option to join even if you um, don't want to become a certified coach. The certification process is optional and many people um, join even without getting the certification because they want the tools and skills and resources for themselves or for their teams. Because most of the people who do join are leaders, coaches, or entrepreneurs. So let me, oh, the most exciting part too, because you've said yes to yourself this summer, when enrollment begins for Flow Academy in September, so September 25th, enrollment for Flow Academy is going to open. You are going to get this special code. It's, I'm going to email it to you with the replay of this. So you'll have it in your email, but $1,000 off. This is like unheard of. So $1,000 off because you were so committed this summer and not very many people actually commit to bettering themselves with personal growth over the summer. So you'll get $1,000 off your enrollment of Flow Academy um, with this code, Summer School.